Ooh, what is up you guys and of course as always welcome back to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your troll of course the Scarender and yeah yet again you see the same team here that I've been using for the couple of last days actually which had been the Scar Pharaoh and your um, Witch's Policy Parasect, uh, Curse White Herb, uh, Milk Tank, Lantern which is Assault Vested Variant, Sand Slash with a Spin and Rocks and Fight MC Oranguru. And yeah, we are dealing with a very, 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 very dangerous matchup indeed. We are actually dealing with um, Dejar Levis, which I'm really going to butcher that name for that. I'm sorry, I'm going to call it Dejar. And he's using Kingler, Shadot, Armaldo, and I can't remember if it was Monferno, Golurg, and B-Barrel. As you guys already seen on the screen preview, it's a freaking B-Barrel. That's, that those mods are dangerous, that mod specifically are dangerous, due to simple of course, and sword stands, that there are a lot of things they can do concept there, um, it's one of the strongest ones there is, but mill tank is always a monster on its own, so it's whether or not my mill tank is <laughs> bulky enough to deal with that Pokemon, and just overall, due to Scrappy, um, mill tank is actually very interesting in PU, because it works better as an offensive Pokemon than defensive stealth rock. While defensive stealth rock is very good actually right now in NU and RU, the offensive set has been shining quite a lot due to the scrappy ability and people have been using facade and whatnot. And you know I'm I'm clearly up for debate. Now with that said, you know as always I'm gonna lead off with my Pharaoh and see where the game takes us. So with that said, let's go into the match. So from the get go, I really gonna just gonna say this. He brings the best lead ever, which is Kingler. I have no chance versus this. If he gets an agility, things are looking pretty darn rough. So I'll go for U-turn here. I'm predicting hopefully that it goes for Crab Hammer. So I'm actually going to bring in my Parasect, thinking, you know, this, this is the time Parasect gets his time to shine and finally showcase what it's all about. But no, this is not that game either. So <laughs> he's going to knock off my weakness policy and, you know, fine. Uh, he has looking to switch out, which I felt was really surprising, and decided to go for a lead seed here. I was basically second this Pokemon, hoping he couldn't set up versus me. Uh, I was hoping that Seed Bomb would scare him out, but at the same time, it outspeeds me, so I felt that was really weird to go for another knockoff. Then again, you know, I I'm okay with this, as Armaldo comes in. Now, I'm going to send in my uh, Sand Slash, because it showcased already that this is a defensive Armaldo, since I didn't do any damage with Leech Life. And he's gonna actually gonna go for Exodicer, which doesn't do necessarily anything. Um, we definitely eat that up, and I can definitely retaliate with Stealth Rocks. Now, I really need Stealth Rocks mainly because of his uh, Bolt Armaldo, but also his Shotot. Shotot could very well sweep me. If it is a spec set with Boom Burst, it's not gonna end well for me. Uh, even Scar set with Boom Burst is scary. So, with that said, you know, he brings in the Shotot. I'm feeling, you know, if I'm gonna do something. It would probably be switching Parasect just to kind of just sack it. I mean, it's proved its point, which is basically that it's it's not usable. And I'm okay with that. He goes directly for Boom Burst, and this doesn't tell me anything. Now, I will predict this probably Scarf to be going for it directly. So I'm going to bring my Lantern here, and I felt that, you know, I can force him out. I'm going to go for an Ice Beam because I felt it was overall the neutral play here in case the Golder comes in as he does. Fucking finally, I get something right. And we get Ice Beam going on, and it's not going to do necessarily anything. So this is a Salt Vest, people. That's not good. <laughs> so I'm going to switch out going back to Kishir. Basically, I was telling myself, don't go for Dynamic Punch. As we see, Drain Punch. I'm like, yes. It, it's not annoying. <laughs> so anyway, from this point, you know, I'm just going to go for the safe knockoff. Nothing on his team necessarily want to take a knockoff. The few that do can win the matchup. So I would clear out speed. Knockoff almost kills, and he's going to retaliate, actually, with an Ice Punch, and that will sting. That will sting quite a bit, but we take that fairly alright. I mean, we're still defensive after all, so the point of being defensive is to not necessarily fall but for one easy move. As I keep going for Knockoff in case we want to preserve it, but no, he's actually the Golurk, and we are having one Golurk gone, which means that I'm free to Volt Switch whenever I want to, and that's what you need with Lantern, really. So Shadow comes in. Now... We are not in the best position, um, and I will actually optimize for sacking my um, my sand slash here mainly because I don't have a switch in. I go for knockoff here. Luckily, it goes for nasty plot. Uh, so now we know he's he's not specs, 
uh, and he's not scarfed, which both of these being very, very good for us as we sort of tire barriers. So that's going to actually recover 50% of the HP. Glad that didn't happen. As it goes for Boom Burst, now we know already that he can't outspeed my milk tanks. I'm going to bring in the big Moo, and we're going to go for that very, very, very safe return in KO. Uh, now, I was optimized for Power Up Punch, but realized that, that, that that's not going to work. And so it brings the B barrel. I'm like, oh shit! This is this is the setup. This is this is it. This is how it works. This this is how we lose. Uh, as I go for the safe return, just gonna do as much damage as I can. It's not enough because he goes for a curse, so raising his defense and attack by two, and that's that's not good. That's not good at all. I'm gonna do everything in my power here to go for another return, hoping it is enough to KO. It's probably not, and you know we barely barely miss out on the KO, and he has rest. And I was like, ah, oh, fucking shit. This is not good. Now, he's actually going to showcase there that he has Shesto Bear. So Shesto Resto, it's cursed. Jesus. And uh, I'm actually going to hard switch out. I was predicting him here to go for another curse. I was thinking that was overall his smartest play. But he goes for Waterfall. And it does a tremendous amount of damage towards us. And I'm going to go for a C Focus Blast there. Hoping to survive a quick attack. We barely do that. And we are able to avoid a complete sweep from this mon. I really can't stress this enough. Had he gone for another curse, I would have been able to survive this much, much easier. But this turned out that he made optimized play for Waterfall. It almost paid off. And we are very, very lucky here that Oranguru coming out of nowhere, surviving, showing what it's all about. No setup on my watch as we're going to kick the beaver out of here. Now, we have a pretty decent opening right now because all of a sudden, Miltang looks to be the monster that we need and deserve. So I'm gonna actually sack my Oranguru. I felt you know he's he's done his job, which is quite a lot actually. We get this Spadef drop, which is also him. He goes for rapid spin, that's quite right. It is enough to KO, of course. Really just spin kills are like the essence of um what do you say? It's it's very shameful to be killed by rapid spin, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'm gonna bring the big moo. And uh, I'm going to go for the best set there is, which is the Curse White Herb set. We are speedy, so we're actually 100 speed uh, base. So we are actually <laughs> speedier than his whole team, barring, of course, whether or not the Monferno is uh, uh, Scarf or something like that. So, yeah, at this point, all I really need to do is get the, the um, attack race because Kingler can definitely survive me. So I'm going to go for the power up punch, and we're going to enter a slow phase of the game. Which is my opponent trying to do something towards me while sacking his Armaldo? Why I go for the actually the power up punch and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And really, the power up punch looks really silly because it's a very weak move. I mean, being unstabbed means it's not that impressive, but at the same time, we do slightly more every time. And with the curse, we're a freaking bulky, so we're not as ill that scared of this Armaldo whatsoever. So, as we keep on going, we are very close now killing him. And I felt that, you know, I'm not going to take any risk here. I'm going to try to secure this game, which means that I'll actually go for a mill drink here. Just get enough HP, get in the zone, and then KO him with a power-up punch and then try to wrap the game up. And I'm going to say try, because there's still a few factors in, and Monferno being one of them. If Monferno is a Scarf Focus Blast, I am not sure I can take anything of that. But yeah, that's... That is what is required for him to win the game. If he doesn't have that, this is a wrap for me. As Power Up Punch now will, of course, secure the KO. I do believe we are plus 5 now. So that means return will freaking sting. As Monferno comes in, they'll be like, don't be specs, don't be specs, don't be specs, don't be specs. I mean, Focus Blast, I mean, Scarfed, hell. Anyway, outspeed, boom. That's Monferno gone. And that means his last remaining Pokemon is the Kingler. And at plus 5, there is no way a Kingler takes that hit. So... To my opponent here, this guy, thank you so much, of course, for the game. This was really, really, really tense. The B-barrel situation was probably the worst because I didn't know how to tackle it. And it really, really, really paid off to some extent. I was very lucky that the Ranguru actually survived that and could retaliate. I think had it not been able to do so, I would not have been able to win this game at all because it just is one of those mods that just works so well once the roll is starting rolling. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this game. I really thought it was an interesting match. Um, I won't deny it though. I think had it went for the lines of return or waterfall, things would have turned very differently when it comes to B barrel play. But yeah, waterfall works very well for me. And I don't know how Oranguru survived it. I guess naturally bulk really does pay off here. 
But all in all, you know, I, I won't deny it. I was fairly lucky there. He not going for another curse. Yeah, that's that's a risky play. And I probably should have been smarter there. So I'm really glad I came out on top of this one. Uh, and as always, guys, you know, thank you so much as always for watching. And make sure, of course, as always, follow me on the Discord channel down below if you want to battle me. Follow me on Twitter. And, of course, as always, say in the comment section if you want to battle me. And follow that up with I am a pussy. And, you know, figure out stuff from there. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, guys, as always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next video. Till then, as always, take care. Bye.